John Thompson, um, I'm the CTO of Vertisant. At Vertisant, we help our customers with all aspects of their cloud journey. Um, in particular, relevant to today, is optimization. Um, so we work with customers with billions of dollars of spend, and we help them make the most efficient use they can of the cloud. And I'm joined today by Enrique. And I'm Enrique Rodriguez. I'm a platform engineering manager at Ninja Holdings. Um, I started my career automating things. I continued evangelizing DevOps, and now I build tooling that empowers engineers to take action. Um, this is uh, my fifth time attending reInvent, first time talking. So. <laughs> Great, thank you, Enrique. Um, so yeah, the topic today, how to empower software engineers to take action and improve cloud efficiency. Um, so, why are we talking about this? So firstly, a bit of terminology for anyone not familiar with it. FinOps, pretty new term, been around a couple of years. Basically, finance meets DevOps. So it's all about the teams in organizations who manage cloud spend. Um, and there's a great group called the FinOps Foundation where an awful lot of community support for everybody working in this area. And each year, they put out a survey of members. Um, one of the questions, what's the biggest challenge that faces you? Um, and last year's survey, number one, getting engineers to take action. So people can find lots of great opportunities to save, but actually getting them to happen, actually getting that bill to reduce is a big challenge. Um, and this was a, a pretty big representation, 1,000 respondents, uh, 30 billion of spend, so clearly a big issue. I'm putting it all in context. Um, Massive number there, nearly 500 billion cloud spend forecast for 2022. Um, and in our experience, a good third of that is likely to be waste. It could be optimized, it could be removed. So you can see the potential there. Um, if we all were able to do our part of this, the money that's freed up to do other things, massive. So we're going to talk about a few different topics today. Um, You'll see there's a, a sort of consistent theme running through it, but a few different angles on that. So the first thing I want to talk about is separating signal from noise. So let's imagine um, you're tasked with optimizing the cloud, with maybe reducing the cloud spend. Um, you've perhaps invested in a tool. There are lots of great tools out there. And it's telling you there's all sorts of things you can do. There's loads of EC2 instances you can right size, all sorts of other stuff. Um, it's telling you that you're going to save millions. Um, you and senior management really excited, looking forward to the bill going down. Um, so what do you do? You, you send the list off to your engineers, or maybe you give them access to the tool, and now they look at it. Mm, OK, so there's 1,000 EC2 instances here. I really haven't got time to wade through this. This is just going to be a waste of time. I can see some of these are nonsense anyway. Maybe they look a little bit more. Are these guys clueless? Half of these are in ASGs. Don't you know you can't downsize individual instances in ASG? It's not that simple. I've got to focus on next week's release anyway. I'm, I'm not going to go through this list. So nothing happens. Um, maybe you follow up a few times, a month or two later. OK, how, how's this going? Has the cloud bill gone down yet? And you say, well, no, I've, I've sent lots of good stuff over to the engineering team, but they're doing nothing. And then maybe they ask the engineering team what's going on. They say, well, this is just all nonsense. This is a waste of my time. All these things don't make sense. Um, end result, you maybe end up with senior management thinking, well, why, why are we doing this? Why did we invest in this tool? Why do we have a FinOps team, maybe? It's kind of just not going anywhere. And so let's think about doing it a different way. Let's understand the developer's world a bit more. So let's say you do some homework. You think about the engineer's world. So instead of sending them that list of 1,000 instances, you look at it and you figure out, OK, a lot of these are in an ASG. Actually, there's a couple of ASGs there with similar names. Maybe you do a bit of research on the internet. Ah, OK, that's this system. Right, OK, now I sort of understand what's going on here. Um, you dig into the data a bit more. And so now you go to the engineering team and you say, OK, we found there's these very large ASGs. Um, they're running R5-24x large instances. Um, we can see in the last month, none of them have had CPU or memory that's gone above the size a 4x large could handle. Um, 
you know what, if we could resize this, this is 40,000 per instance, that's millions in total. And so instead of making them do all the work, sending them a long list, instead, you've done the work, you're taking them one simple idea to get feedback on and to see if they can do it. So overall theme from that, do your homework and think about the developer, think about kind of how it's going to be from their perspective. Um, so that's separating signal from noise. The second thing we wanted to talk about was making it as easy as possible for people to take action. So maybe the engineer thinks, yeah, you know what? We could resize these ASGs. That does kind of make sense. Um, but it's not as simple as that. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's probably not going to happen next week. And the more you can understand their world and what's involved and potentially how you can help in it, the better. So you ask yourself questions like, well, who's actually going to make this change? Who needs to sign off on it? Who's the sponsor? Um, what's actually involved in making the change? Is this infrastructure as code? Is somebody going to change some terraforms and push them out and magic happens? Is somebody going to do lots of manual stuff? If it's manual, could it be automated if it's a lot of work? Maybe you could help with that automation if your team has that capability. And then you also need to think about things like, well, clearly there's a risk with making a change. How are the team going to handle that? How do they need to manage that? Maybe there's a test environment they can run stress tests in. Um, is that environment representative? If all the tests pass there, how high is the confidence that production is going to be OK? So there's all these things to sort of think through, understand, OK, what are these people going to have to do to actually make the change? Um, so again, we're doing some homework there. And it's back to empathy. We're thinking about the developers. We're trying to understand before we have the conversation with them what's going to be involved so we can go and sort of have a conversation and work out how best to help them make the changes. So the third area I want to talk about is to do with feedback. And I'm going to hand over to Enrique to give you some of his experience on that. Uh, John, I really appreciate you talking about doing homework. Uh, it's very important that whenever you ask an engineer to do something, you provide context. Uh, first of all, it gives them the why, and it usually sparks collaboration. Um, one of the things that, as an engineer, I used to hate was getting requests where there was little to no context given, and they were, you were asked to do X. Uh, usually, like, those went to the back, all the way at the bottom of the backlog. Um, at Ninja Holdings, our team prioritizes con uh, starting those feedback loops. And it's, we do that early in any initiative that we're working on. Um, when one of the initi initiatives that I led, uh, one of the very first things that we, do, that we did was uh, talk to the engineering teams about uh, their knowledge. That we were migrating to Kubernetes. We were doing six applications. And one of the very first things we did was Talk to the engineering teams. We gave them the context on why we were trying to do it. One, we believed that it was going to improve their application re resiliency. Two, it was going to imp improve their deployment speeds. Um, then we needed to understand what their level of experience with Kubernetes was. We realized that um, that was going to be a huge blocker because not, we didn't have that many engineers experience that had ever used Kubernetes. So what we, need, what we needed to do was start that feedback loop right away. Uh, we focused on knowledge sharing sessions. Um, then we also did some documentation that enabled engineers to support their applications in as similar, as close as possible to the, what they were used to in their EC2 infrastructure. Um, from there, like that just created a foundation of, of collaboration, and we were able to uh, work with the application owners to migrate their, uh, to continue to migrate their applications. Uh, the journey took three months, but after those three months, all, all all our goals were met. We reduced cloud spend, we improved uh, deployment speed, and our applications there was less outages. Um, as you begin, uh, one of the things like. If we would have just migrated applications without them being in the, in the providing feedback, it wouldn't have gone as successful.
So that's the importance of, of getting these feedback loops in place. Uh, what I recommend as you start your journey is a, a work, work with your engineering teams to establish a process. Uh, once you establish that process, it's always important to remember that you can always change it. You know, it, and in order to do that, what I recommend is doing regular retrospectives. And that, that usually, like you, uh, together you come to, to a consensus on what needs to change in order to achieve better outcomes. And the more you do this and the more you practice, uh, all, all these processes just become second nature and you end up in an environment that is full of collaboration. And I think that's what really empowers engineers to take action on, it, on a, you know, what you're trying to give them. So. Great, thank you, Enrique. Um, so, I mean, thinking about all these areas, as I say, common themes, think about it as a partnership. Um, do your homework, empathize with the people who are going to need to make these changes. Um, an analogy I often think of is, over many years, I've worked with lots of recruitment consultants, recruiting developers and things, and if you think about it, there are some recruitment consultants where you'll get a gazillion resumes, a gazillion CVs, and a few of them might be great, but you've got to wade through and try and figure out which are good. And there are recruitment consultants who just listen to you, get it right, real high quality, high hit rate. You maybe get 10, but eight of them are great. Um, very similar to our 1,000 EC2 instances, make the developer wade through it versus doing your homework. And then similarly on the feedback loops, maybe that recruitment consult doesn't get it quite, recruitment consultant doesn't get it quite right, um, but you explain to them what's wrong. Actually, we need to look for this, or yeah, this isn't quite what we meant by that skill. Um, next batch of resumes they send through, if they're now on point, if they've taken that on board, that's great, you want to work with this person. If they just do the same again, if they've basically ignored you, thinking, well, why, why did I bother having that conversation with you? Why did I bother giving you that feedback? You're just not listening. So, same here. If the, say, the engineering team come to you and say, well, yeah, that's great, but we can't resize to a 4X large. We have to keep 100% headroom in case of DR failover from another region. Take that on board adjust the config in the system so you don't go recommending things that aren't going to work next time, and just continually listen, take on board the feedback, and make the process better for them. Um, so in case I've not said it enough times, homework, empathy, partnership. Um, if anyone does have any questions, then um, yeah, we'll be around at the side there, or pop over to the Versant booth over near Datadog, um, and we'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Thank you so much, John. Thank you so much, Enrique.